Hello everyone, the Lord be with you and also with you. Oh my goodness, what a dreadful week we have endured and the ramifications will be with us for a very, very long time. However, what is most important in difficult times, even very, very difficult times, is to keep focused on God and to remember this about God. He has always been in control. He is in control now. And he always will be in control. Keep your eyes upon Jesus. God is with us. Despite the temptation just to talk about what is going on, I am going to keep to the lectionary reading set for today, just as I've been doing throughout this pandemic. And with that in mind, I think that today's gospel reading has something to say to us as followers of Jesus about our response to what is happening around us. And so, Let's listen to the good news proclaimed in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 12, reading verses 1 to 8. Glory to Christ our Saviour. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and began to pick some heads of grain and eat them. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath. He answered, Haven't you read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God, and he and his companions ate the consecrated bread, which was not lawful for them to do, but only for the priests. Or haven't you read in the law that on the Sabbath the priests in the temple desecrate the day, and yet are innocent? I tell you that one greater than the temple is here, if you had known what these words mean, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the innocent. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. What does this say to us in our current situation? I think it reminds us both of our humanity and the love and power of Jesus. When people are hungry, they want to eat. And that is what the disciples did. And the Pharisees berated them for it, for it was against the law to pick corn on the Sabbath. Now, I am not in any way condoning violence or looting. But when we look with condemnation and anger at the people looping, looting our shopping malls, many of whom didn't look particularly undernourished, let us just remember that many have endured and are enduring great hardship because of COVID. Jobs and livelihoods have already been lost and people are suffering. So it must have been quite easy to mobilize them. Our response is important. And I'm reminded of something that Pope Francis said. If our heart is closed, if our heart is made of stone, then the stones will end up in our hands and then we will be ready to throw them at someone. If we focus on anger against the looters and have no compassion, then I think our hearts will harden. We will be brought down by feelings of anger and anxiety. Rather, let's focus on the way that communities are rallying together to overcome this destruction. The goodness of so many people extending helping hands to each other. I'm sure many of us have good stories to tell. In my block of flats, one man drove right up to Cato Ridge and came back with bread and milk, which he distributed. Someone else found eggs. The only thing that I have run out of altogether was salt 
of all things, and that need has been supplied. Communities are pulling together in love. Going back to that scripture passage, Jesus makes it clear that compassion, which stems from love, is so important. And love is the law above all laws. He did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. And God's law is the law of love. That is the command that Jesus has asked us to keep. And the laws that humans make should stem from that ultimate law of love. And I think we need to remember this in the days and weeks to come, even as justice does need to be administered. I seem to remember that we came across that quotation from Hosea 6, verse 6, not long ago, where God says, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Let's not forget that. The founder of Gifts of the Givers, Imtiaz Suleiman, said this yesterday. The sense of reason, compassion and love for each other has defeated traitors. The process of rebuilding our economy, livelihoods and hope has commenced with fervour. Yes, indeed, we do have hope. Our hope as Christians comes from Jesus, the Lord of the Sabbath, the Lord over everything. We can rely on him to be with us through this crisis, as he has been with us through every crisis. And he gives us hope for the future. And so let us pray. Let us to remember, especially at this time, to pray and pray and pray. Lord, we are tempted to descend into the pit of despair as we see the destruction around us and already begin to experience the difficulties of food and fuel shortages. Help us to keep our eyes on you, Lord, to know that you are with us through this crisis, that you are in control now and always. Be with our leaders as they attempt to steer us through this time. And Lord, we do pray that we, and especially our leaders, will learn from what has happened. We know that our society is unequal and that many suffer from poverty. May we rebuild a more just and caring society. We ask that you will be with those who have lost jobs and livelihoods through this unrest and be with the families of those who have lost their lives. We pray that there will be no more violence and that we will all pull together to restore what has been destroyed. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. If you think about those words that we have just prayed, they just mean so much at this time. Virtually everything we prayed there we can apply to ourselves today. Let's pray the prayer for Africa. God bless Africa. Protect our women and children. Transform our leaders. Heal our communities. 
restore our dignity and give us peace. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. And we pray the prayer for South Africa. If I can find it. Lord, grant us a vision for our land, a land of justice where none shall prey on others, a land of plenty where poverty shall cease to fester, a land of work where all can be employed, a land of openness where all are accepted as equal, a land of healing where hatred and racial prejudice exist no more, a land of peace which is free of violence, and bring this vision to fruition for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, all those whom you love and for whom you pray, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Tamsin said we have to finish this time together today by listening to the sounds, the words of the song, Lord, heal our nation. So that is how we will close. Goodbye, everybody. Stay safe. Look after yourselves. And God is with us all. Lots of love. Deep.